My name is Bill Alleman, and I'm here today because my autonomy is yet again under siege. I'm here to speak for vanishing first principles. Who should have authority to control our lives, the individual or the state? I condemn this as hardly, hardly a trivial matter in a country founded on fragile individual liberty. Yet history and ever-expanding law books clearly show us that every successive generation is habituated to incrementally less freedom. Surely even this bill's supporters will concede that this won't be the end of their social engineering. There will always be just one more incursion on the fundamental concepts of individual liberty and personal responsibility for our own good, of course. <clears throat> What these supporters can't or won't grasp, however, is that our own good is also our own business. It concerns me greatly that far too many, including legislators, as we've already heard today, don't fully appreciate or respect these concepts today. Nevertheless, the founders still assure me that I need not worry about having to surrender them for myself. That is a fact. In a constitutional republic, rights do trump the majority. I'm certainly not here to argue against the efficacy of seatbelts. It is, however, an issue for education, not legislation, not government force. All the personal stories and statistics you're hearing today are surely heart-rending, and certainly delivering bad news is incredibly hard. But it's all completely irrelevant to the fundamental fact that we each have a right to make our own choices and, yes, even our own mistakes. Even if the statistics aren't quite what we'd like to see. That's how a free society works. You've already heard the argument, basically, but, Dad, all the other states are doing it. To me, the obvious response to this is, where in these United States, in this land of the free. <clears throat> Does one go? Can one rely on anymore to escape government meddling? Proudly, it has been New Hampshire. But this bill seeks to eliminate the very last refuge on this issue, the last of 50, the final extinction of seatbelt <coughs> self-government. Amen. There will be nowhere left to retreat for those who would dare claim the temerity to make their own decision whatever that might be. Is that really necessary? Must the spirit of self-determination be eliminated everywhere? Must we also embrace paternalism? Is there absolutely no room for limited government in even the smallest corner of this country anymore? We are Borg? And ominously, what similar personal decisions shall we surrender to the state next for the good of the collective? There are indeed virtually infinite right candidates, many affecting this committee's own private lives, I have precious little doubt, and only live free or die hypocrisy needed to regulate them all. I did not elect mommies and daddies. Despite what proponents of this bill seem to believe, I am a sentient legal adult, not a child to be molded by the state. Please tell me right now, right here, if you contend otherwise. I reject government's authority to protect me from myself. I require that my government respect my decisions and protect me from those who would, through force of intrusive government, impose upon me their will, their view of how I should live my life, what risks I should be allowed to take. No. It's my choice, not my neighbor's. And significantly, it's my neighbor's choice not mine. In closing, government can't make life safe. And laws do not stop crime. They merely define it. And this bill would thus merely define a whole new class of nonviolent criminals worthy of state aggression who never asked for the state's help in the first place. Please stop government's unauthorized and unwelcome behavior modification experiments. Please defend vanishing first principles. 
please retain our New Hampshire culture of individual liberty and personal responsibility and reject the insidious and un-American nanny state and only its latest onslaught in the form of HB 383. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Any questions?